Okay, this starter question from a collaborator is lightly paraphrased and edited. Someone asks, what is going on with how hard it is for me to formulate plans and stick to them over the long term? It's really hard to make promises to myself. I do stick to some things, but the local variation of stick to is huge. And if I want to do things like meditate, which might make it easier to stick to other things over time, there's a bootstrapping problem if I can't get myself to meditate in the first place. Okay, so I sort of want to talk about the long-term thing first, like what happens when someone has been meditating for a very long time, sort of like what's their stick to and if they like make promises to themselves, like can they decide to, you know, to sort of start and stop things that, you know, okay, I'm going to do this for a year, and like they just do it and stuff like that. Like, is that something that one might expect if one is a long-term meditator? So it's not quite like that, but there is kind of a cool thing that happens. I want to call it something like, like appropriate uh, fluidity or something like that. So there's, there's this idea of like when someone is making decisions, and in this case, like making decisions to do something or not do something, very, very roughly speaking, there's sort of two ways to make a decision. One of the things some of them might do is sort of decide with the head. So it's like there's this experience of, you know, effort and um, like a considering considerations and contingencies and uh, options and parameters and affordances and, you know, various scenarios like how it's going to work. And what happens if this goes wrong? And then like, what's the backup plan? And like stuff like that. So that could sort of be called uh, making decisions with the head. And there's sort of a combinatorial explosion there. There's another thing that can be done, which is sort of, you know, very, you know, loosely analogously speaking, like making decisions with the body. And so the, the analogy here is uh, if you take a water and like you pour it into a container of like all sorts of different shapes the water always knows sort of what shape to take of the container that's poured into if it's like a tall beaker the water takes the shape of a tall beaker if it's like a teapot the water takes the shape of a teapot and stuff like that so like there's some sense in which you know there's an astronomical number of uh, molecules in a volume of water and it's like all of those like water molecules like kind of know what to do you know, based on the causes and conditions and physical laws and gravity and whatever. It's just like the right thing just kind of happens spontaneously based on what water is and how it works and what physics is and how it works and stuff like that. So people start out as sort of very like structurally rigid. There's like only sort of like tiny parts of a person that can kind of get edited as they like kind of grow and learn. But when someone is has meditated for a long time, the system becomes sort of more, much more um, pliable and supple and fluid. So there's still structure um, because you know the person's behavior like doesn't dysregulate and collapse at least at least you know non monotonicities aside and stuff like that and sort of things being hard like along the way. So it's like you know person still has like coherent behavior, but there's something extraordinarily flexible about how that behavior, how that person's preferences, the things that that person does and like the way they are and what they do, it becomes very structurally fluid. So not arbitrary, but fluid. And so there's a way in which a person kind of begin, is able to kind of take the shape of their environment. You know, it's not instantaneous. Like there needs to be time for kind of the system to turn over. And if it's like a big thing, then person needs to sleep on it like multiple nights and like have experiences during the day and proactively seek stuff out and like kind of get their bearings and whatever. But there's a way in which the person's system, their behavior, their preferences, everything kind of settle to take the shape of the environment that they're in. But the long-term meditator in a different environment, their behavior and preferences and etc. like will change. So there's a way in which, just as a tangent, there's a way in which that could kind of be um like sort of scary well it's like what's like the core of a person like do i have an identity if i'm like this different thing in each situation like is there any like essential thing that that i am and stuff like that so the system won't start having that fluidity until like the system is like comfortable with that so like it happens conservatively and by degrees 
and also like in the sort of realm of like human relations it's extremely valuable for a person to be kind of reliable to sort of have like an identity and consistency and coherence and kind of like an intertemporal sort of reliable reliability trustworthiness etc so like in in the long run in the long run like maybe in the short run it's helpful to be like different things in different situations but i think what tends to happen for a long-term meditator is that you know even though there's this like extraordinary fluidity people tend to become like more consistent and coherent and yeah not necessarily legible um although people will present like a like a legibility and authenticity to friends family coworkers, colleagues collaborators clients something all, all the different things and, and tangent and tangent in any case so the person gets this like structural fluidity so okay so actually like it's not a tangent at all like it allows me to connect into the thing this structural fluidity uh works for people in terms of having uh consistent behaviors over time so here's what can happen, all things being equal. You, the person becomes like more and more structurally fluid. And so there becomes like this tremendous like exploration period where the person has like all these new affordances and like has all these new sort of, you know, behaviors and possibilities of ways that they can be because like all these things are opening up um, and all these like desires and preferences and whatever, like sort of starting to sort. So like, at first, it might seem like that person is becoming like even more chaotic. They get interested in a thing, they like pick it up, put it down, and like from the outside, it looks like what is this person doing? Like they're like doing all these things. They've you know they have they're into one thing one day and then another thing another day and like so on. But there's this sort of sorting and settling thing that happens where like what the person is doing is sort of uh, experimenting and learning and eliminating possibilities. Sometimes revisiting them, reopening them as like new information comes in. But like there's this like tremendous like sort of churning and like shuffling that happens over time and like over and then over time like the system sort of starts to settle and so like consistency consistent behavior deciding to do some particular thing like you know stick with an exercise program or like a personal project or, like a hobby um learning an instrument learning a language something that like that arises spontaneously from sort of like the whole system settling the whole system kind of like taking the shape of its environment and so like you know we're, we're human beings so like that can be like really really intricate you know something like playing an instrument or or whatever so like like in the limit like a person doesn't have to even sort of really decide or like make um sort of commitments to themselves um because you know the, the right thing just like kind of happens as well, like a person becomes more comfortable with kind of that like searching and sorting, you know, they, they might come to decide they don't want to do X anymore. So then there's this big flurry of whatever. And a person may not need to like display like a coherent interface to like the outside world. This is sort of an inconsistency inside of the other consistency that I was talking about before. Um, constructive, personal, felt, awesome inconsistency. So like, they might be pursuing like a particular like through line, you know, where they're trying out like a bunch of like different artistic media and like maybe like some, you know, uh, some video thing, like they're just all this experimenting, but it's like that person is like sort of actually kind of covertly kind of doing like one thing, trying to figure out one particular thing, you know, and then suddenly they've done all this crazy stuff. Suddenly, boom, it's like they just, they start a business or boom, like they, you know, pick up like the guitar and like never stop. Or so like out of sort of that, that chaos, which is just the body kind of, you know, body and mind and everything, just kind of finding the shape of the environment that they're in because the human system is just, is a problem solving system. Something will like eventually become like very felt intrinsically meaningful. And then the person will just like do that. So there's the other piece of this, which is like the bootstrapping problem. That's sort of like cold comfort for a person who is not in that kind of like fluid settling phase. And also like if one of the things they're trying to be more consistent about, say like is meditation so that they can kind of bootstrap to this thing, if it sounds good to them. This is like sort of the frustrating part of the video where 
it's hard for me to give general advice. Like it's sort of easy to talk about the fluid meditator case, but it's like harder to talk about individual things. First pass, there's sort of a litany of tricks. Um, announcing to friends what you're going to do ahead of time, scheduling meditation sessions with other people, keeping a physical object to remind you to meditate on your pillow, devoting an entire corner of a room to sort of a meditation shrine, uh, merely qualitatively, qualitatively recording what you did each day, day after day, as opposed to scheduling dedicated time, keeping an actual cumulative time log, re rewarding yourself if you do meditate, bending over backwards to make meditating fun, scheduling a big block where you might meditate, and doing chores and fun things until you sort of find yourself gently backing yourself into meditating even if only briefly, saying you only have to meditate for 30 seconds minimum each day and doing that, uh, rearranging your schedule to have more free time during X part of the day or week. So there's sort of an endless list of things to try for possible low-hanging fixes, but beyond these sort of low-hanging fruit or quick fixes, and it's a great idea to try five of those, 10 of those, 20 of those, 30 of those. There's sort of a slow kind of, I don't know, I'll call it like a, like a pre-settling before sort of the considerably more, you know, pliability, uh, fluidity phase where a person is just kind of slowly learning themselves. And as best one can, you know, one should um, try to avoid um, haste, rushing, forcing, bypassing, overriding. Um, these are the kinds of things that will, all things being equal, not necessarily, no hard and fast rules, uh, just sort of make things take uh, longer in the long run, um, sometimes, because um, there will sort of be deep structural reasons why a person for example, wants to meditate, but they're currently not meditating, or they're meditating sporadically, um, or they wish that they were meditating more and more consistently, there will be deep structural reasons for that, that almost by definition or systematically or systemically um, won't be easily uh, like legible, self-legible or self-conceptualizable at first. Um, or the person will kind of have a sense of what's going on, but they won't have contact with sort of the like the real visceral levers or something like that. And kind of discovering those over time um, uh, by oneself or with the help of other people uh, is kind of part of the process. So I'm really hesitant to, in a, a general video, to like use words like blocks, like a person having blocks, or to use words like fighting, like you know a person's fighting themselves. Saying those kinds of things can be you know heard in different ways by different people. Those words are, can be useful to kind of um, help to delineate you know structure. Um, you know so so one can like very loosely, very very loosely talk about a person having a block or talk about. Um, a person fighting themselves, you know, different, again, speaking provisionally, different parts of a person kind of pulling in different directions. So like I'm sort of hedging and, and like being very careful to like guard against kind of, um, you know, inappropriate reification of, of like these kinds of ideas. You know, it's a system dynamics, it's different per, per person. Um, you know, everybody is sort of, you know, structurally different and we'll use words in like different ways, but uh, so, you know, there are sorts, sort of general themes. A person might not want to meditate or have this, you know, deep block to meditating because um, they have concerns about uh, becoming too different from other people, or um, they have like real legitimate concerns deep down or on the surface about opportunity cost or, what if it doesn't work, or what if it's too slow, or what if it's too destabilizing? Um, or they might just be like very lonely uh, when they meditate. Or, you know, it's just there's just so many possibilities that are only uh, legible and, and understandable sometimes, like in retrospect, you know, why a person is having trouble uh, meditating. And even saying that they're having trouble is like sort of problematic because their system 
you know, just might need that kind of outside calendar time to settle. It can take, you know, a few weeks or a few months before a person has kind of like arranged like self in life where it makes sense to kind of pick up like a new thing. Or like even if they're sort of ready to go, something just kind of might need to tick over in real time, like over and over again, or just sort of little structural pieces that like might be really intricate. So like, you know, if a person doesn't meditate for a couple weeks or a couple months, or like they're really sporadic for like six months or something, it's possible that that's just exactly what needs to happen. Uh, that being said, like it can feel terrible from the inside, depending on, you know, a person's pattern of, uh, again, sort of speaking loosely, like self-attacking or self-flagellation or whatever, um, uh, you know, those things are okay too. So. It, it just it can be just really structurally complicated and the time dynamics um, and the pattern of on and off uh, can be sort of really um, counterintuitive and slow uh, and sometimes like you know painful from the inside and then sort of looking at individual structure or sort of uh, enumerating like many different kinds of patterns across people that might be helpful um, for sort of making sense of things on the front end and being more comfortable with it taking time on the front end you know, that's a little bit outside the scope of this video, uh, but um, I hope this sort of suffices to kind of give a taste or flavor of that. For everybody, almost everybody, there's like this complicated puzzle to solve. And then like over time, as like things become sort of more fluid, it's like, you know, it becomes easy to meditate 16 hours a day if like that's a thing. And like sometimes you even have to, um, and then things get really disruptive. Um, so like, you know, being able, being able to meditate for long periods of time very consistently, um, if that makes sense. Like, that's a thing that comes over time. But, like, the important thing is, like, for anyone who sort of figures out their personal situation, the long-run thing is um, is pretty cool. I just want to note, I said things earlier, like, you know, you put the meditator in an environment, and then they'll become the shape of the environment. Um, so, like, that environment can be the entire world. Um, and the meditator taking the shape of their environment could involve something incredibly proactive and incredibly encompassing and incredibly uh, big and beautiful and they're reshaping like everything around them. So like, you know, taking the shape of the environment can also mean like radically reshaping the environment. Um, and making something new and positive sum with like everybody else in that environment and beyond that environment and like the entire world So this like taking the shape of things can be like incredibly, like, you know, generative um, and powerful. So that's also a thing